Hello. So I have a confession to make. I wasn't entirely truthful in my last video. I have a bit of a... I'm a bit unwell at the moment. I have a bit of an upset stomach. And I'm not very good with video editing in that I don't even know how to splice two videos together. That's why these are all one take. And my last video ended very abruptly because my stomach started to very suddenly tell me that I was in trouble. So that's why I didn't do any of my usual wrap up or sign off. I basically flew. So that's why I'm gonna upload both these videos at once. So I very much apologize for that. It was deeply unprofessional of me. Um, I'm gonna pick up continuing talking about um, darkness, vision, particularly two add-ons I'm gonna to touch on now. So I might also tag this as being both of them. Torch and Community Light by Blitz. Um, when I go back in, well, first of all, talk about Torch. Torch is a great add-on if you're gonna make your campaign go the way that I've talked about with my Nighttime Barovia, in that um, players can toggle a, a torch off and on. When they do that, it will reduce the number of an item of a specific name, which by default is torch, in their bag by one. So this means you can then, much like rations in um, Tomb of Annihilation, you can make torches a resource. It will actually become, especially if you don't have, I, I hate that one of my players has dark vision. Um, if you somehow ended up with a party of people that can't see in the dark, Torches become a really valuable commodity. It becomes actual interest in loot. At the moment, I feel like torches are one of those things that, you know, when you roll a character, okay, yeah, Dungeoneers pack I choose, yeah, 10 torches, whatever. You probably still have those 10 torches at the end of your campaign. So torches are really simple. You install it, and, and that's it. Um, when you toggle a torch, a player will if i go into the token for harry human you can set their dim and their bright so i'm going to say um 40 foot dim 20 foot bright i'm going to go in and out of this a few times now so you can see the effect it has so that is now his torch what it does with torch enabled i can right click on him and just click the torch button and it turns it off. Now, it doesn't do that for me because I've got a macro that kind of, I change mine, so there's one button to put it on, one button to put it off. So if I press two, um, then for me, it will disable it. And then I can, after that, start toggling it. I'll bore you with why I've got it like that way in another video. Um, and so if I do it, it doesn't use as torches up because as a DM, you might just want to quickly turn it off or on to highlight or mention something. Uh, that is a setting you can change in, in the module. You can say, no, use up a torch or a whatever the item is called. If I go into the settings for torch, you'll see it's very straightforward. It says, yep, yeah, players can turn their own torches off and on. If a GM does it, what does it take off? Uh, what's the default item? And then I've got this overridden by community lights. I'll show you how in a moment. Um, if I want to give you a bit of a better display of what that looks like, I can choose to put a, a light on the colour. I'm just going to put orange in for now, just so you can see. That's what it looks like. There's a huge a number of settings and things we can do for this. Um, so if I go down, I'm going to change the light animation type. So these ones... So black hole upwards, oh no, now actually. Ah, that's a problem. How do I get that to show for you? Because somebody pointed out the other day in one of my videos that the drop down menus don't work. Okay, this isn't great. It, this is a weird problem with Streamlabs OBS. If I click in here and keep going down and down, you can see there are a large number of light names and some of them change the options underneath, as you can see. Um, what I'm gonna do here is show you my one of choice for torches, which is called, where are we? Blurred torch. 
So you obviously can't see the drop down, I appreciate. There's about 40 different lights in there. Not all of them are D&D related. Some of them are great for like Star Wars or I suppose like Eberron campaigns. I'll cycle through a couple and show you. Um, but if I go Blurred Torch, I get some animation options. So by default, Blurred Torch does that. It's maybe a bit too much for me. So if I go back into it, if you don't know, double left click opens the token and then you uh, opens the actor and then you can go to the token menu but double right click takes you straight into the token stuff um it's just a way of saving you a few clicks so if i go in here and i change the settings so that i want the color intensity to go down a bit i'd like the animation speed to be a bit more intense but maybe slower Let's see what that looks like. That could be better for a torch. I actually think now we've toned it down, I want to increase the color intensity a little bit. That's looking pretty good. So obviously the player has his torch off. He doesn't know because he can't see. Now I know Edna Elf can see, but we could go and put you know, he hears a strange noise out there, and the player says, Hey, DM, can I light a torch? It's like, yeah, of course you can. And then he sees the zombies all around him. Um, so I like it for that. Now, the light effects are stored on a per-player basis. So what that means is they're tied to that person. So if I have... Um, I keep saying Howl Walker to cat. If I have Harry the Human keep lighting a torch... It will always look like this for him if, like I talked about in the video before my stomach exploded, if the actor is linked to the token of that tick box. So you can set customizable light effects. For example, another one of my players, Bartandalus, has a um, eerie sort of light blue to his light spell. So when he casts it, I've got his set as static blur for a slightly different effect, different range, and it's got a different light color and animation. He summons a... He's got a pseudo-dragon. Well, a tailored pseudo-dragon. It's um, it's a homebrew familiar I've done to tie into his like artifact weapon. Um, you'll see that's got a bit of a more ghostly glow to it. It just gives, it gives quite a bit of flavor because... Two players with torches. I get, but if you just use mundane torches, yeah, a torch is a torch. Um, unless someone goes and buys purple torches, which you would absolutely do. You might re your players might really get more invested in Foundry by the sort of personal customizations they can add on. Um, that's just something for, for you to explore. Um, now, I don't feel I can, I can talk about community lighting as much as I would have liked to. On account of that drop down menu not working, and it isn't really worth me just going through and updating all of those different light effect, um, those different lighting styles. But I will talk about that them a little bit more. Um, in fact, no, I'm going to do a separate video for community lighting when I find out why the drop down issue isn't working. So the next thing to talk about is how do you get these lights set up. For this, I'm actually going to swap to another map. I'm going to go to the Wizard of the Wines from my um, Curse of Strahd campaign. So, Curse of Strahd spoilers coming up for Wizard of the Wines. So my group have had several fights and combats here. Oh, and a disco by the looks of it. This is where that light spell was, uh, I mentioned in the last video, a, a big light spell went off. Now you can see I've got some candles burning away in here. They came in at night. Um, I added a couple of small assets to the map, like I added a little lantern asset in here. In the daytime, it makes sense for a map to be fully lit, but I don't like these nighttime maps where you can still see everything. So what I did was put these lights on. Now, when I put a light effect on, and in case you don't know, since the big recent update to Foundry, um, about a month before this video, that turned a lot of the animated lights into baseline you can just single right click a light to toggle it which is nice but what i like to do to avoid 
making more work for myself if a map becomes nighttime. When I'm starting to map out a new area, so when I added Wizard of the Wines in and I haven't put the walls on or anything, I always build it at night in nighttime mode here, not outside my window. Because then I can put the lights on that I think make sense. Um, a family of people live here. They want to be able to see when they walk around. Where would make sense for them to have? At here, I thought they'd have a little light here. So if someone goes to the outhouse at night, they can see the way back to the door and things like that. In the settings for the light, you've got darkness threshold. What that means is how dark does the scene have to be before this light kicks in? Because what you don't want is a daytime map and for you and your players just to be able to tell from a movement of colour that all the chandeliers and like the, the candles are lit because it's daytime. So I've just tweaked that darkness threshold slightly. So if I change this back to daytime, you'll notice at a certain point as it, tra as it transitions, that's going to cut off and stop flickering. A little bit further. There we go. So that light's gone off. So when I now turn this to being a nighttime map, you'll see as it starts to transition down to being dark, it brings it in. Now I use these buttons, make your know, transition to daylight, transition to darkness. They take it from one end of the spectrum to the other. You might want to put it somewhere in the middle. You can do that by right clicking on the scene, go into configure, and you've got a darkness level. And you can do quite a gradual slider. Sometimes if my players have been having RP at dusk or dawn, I don't tell them I'm doing it, but every few minutes that they're speaking, I just nudge it a little bit further. And once or twice, when my players have been like, it, it is getting darker, isn't it? Or like the lights start to kick in. You could even have, you know, um, different lights come on at different darkness thresholds. Maybe the servants go around and light all the big halves first, and then someone comes around and does all the... Uh, the chandeliers, just so your 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 map doesn't just go and all spring into being one way or another. Put your timers on different. Um, if I jump back to my other map, something else I wanted to show you about the light was that you can set an emit angle. Now, similar to our vision for um, our vision angle seen in a cone, you can have the light only be emitted in a cone. Now, I can think of two very good uses of that. First of all, in my campaign, the player of this token, Halvor, is a very shield-based tank, um, but he's human, he can't see in the dark. If he's got a shield, he's got a, uh, his axe, he can't see. So Bartandalus quite often casts light on his shield, and what the players like to do to reflect that is um, I'm going to just toggle his light effect back on. I know it's torch light. I, I change it in the campaign to be in like the same blue as Bartandalus's light. But I could change the emission angle to be something a bit more suitable. And now the light goes forward from his shield. Remember what I said last video as well. If he turned to the side and I used about face module with a lock token. His portrait would stay the right way up, but we can see from the beam of light moving around which way he's facing and moving his shield. You can use that for environmental lights as well. I've got a couple of examples where there is a room in Castle Ravenloft that has a powerful item left on a table or altar or shrine or desk. And what I like to do, just for a bit of effect, is have a single beam of moonlight coming through the window and highlighting that item. I just think it's a cool place to, to do something like that. Um, I did that by putting a big light outside the window, making it a pale moonlight colour and restricting the emission so it's just a thin single beam and then just rotate it to point through that window. My players are probably the day after I put this video up likely to go to the Selenka Pass and there... I'm making sure that there's a rare beam of moonlight a wash over the bridge. Um, so yeah, I I like doing that with with my light. Let me just check the questions I was asked as well. So with a combination of those factors, 
you can start to get into a situation where your night times are very threatening. One thing I will warn you about is that multiple light sources, you know, they, they are additive. So two people with light next to each other, it starts to get really bright. So multiple torch people might blind you a little bit. With the light effect as well, remember I've talked about other um, in other ways. You could have them be on like the Valaki map I've showed you before. Um, in fact, I've just load a couple of examples if i load my village of barovia i think i did it on there as well using these dance and light effects you can use it to have a town map actually have flickering lights um you can do it on your I'm trying to think what animated splash screen i've done this on i think i did it on strad's dinner hall one did I? I can't remember. No, I didn't. But even these theatre of the mind ones I've talked about before, you can have lights on there so that it's a bit of light being cast out. It's a huge amount you can do with them. So I think I've gone through everything with vision there. I've touched on the torch module. I am going to do a separate dedicated video for community lights when I find out why Streamlabs doesn't like to pick up my drop down menu. I might just need to change it to say pick up the whole monitor for doing that video. Apologies again for the rapid ends for previous video. Uh, my stomach appreciates your patience. As ever, if there's anything you want to see me cover, um, please do leave a comment letting me know. Feel free to check out my campaign Tuesdays at half 7pm, um, twitch.tv forward slash Harrison underscore stream. And thank you again to Satori for the excellent question on lighting and vision. If there's anything you felt didn't cover, just let me know. But otherwise, see you next time.